Hello and welcome back to the X-Files Revisited. We were moving on with Season 6. We're now up to Episode 4, which is Dreamland. Brian, you excited for this one? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, it's, it's... <laughs> I can sense the excitement. <laughs> it's been a morning. It's been a morning. It's a... <laughs> It's always it's always a strange thing when you're recording and uh, people just see like when you come on you start recording and you're in recording mode and they've not seen the morning you've had and you just sat there going ah now I've got to talk about an X Files episode it's just all I want to do is throw myself off a cliff uh, but yeah <laughs> I, I I was I was looking forward to this one it's um. Yeah, first of a two-part episode. Uh, obviously, when you get a two-part episode, you expect the the overarching conspiracy kind of yeah. stuff. This isn't that. It's like, yeah, it's a comedy episode, but stretched into two. Um, and obviously, if you're going to do that, then you'd expect it to be something special like otherwise you know confine it to one episode and move on so yeah so the, the very fact that it is a two-parter is is, so, is somewhat intriguing um <clears throat> i always had fond memories of it but ne I, I never remembered it being like one of my most highly rated but I, I i always remembered enjoying it it's um so it's been interesting to go back and revisit it but First part, part one, Dreamland part one. Where do you think IMDb users have this ranked oh, on 217 God. episodes? I honestly have no idea where this one's going to land. I, I'm going to go 37. 37, okay. Yeah. Um, take 30 off that number. Seven. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wow. seven, seven. And now, now I like I say, I had fond memories of this. I always remember enjoying it, but mm -hmm. it would be a huge stretch for me to put this at seven if I was going to rank the X Files episodes. Mm -hmm. Like, e even if even if I end up giving this five stars at the end, and I'm not going to tell you how much I'm, I'm giving it at, at this point. But even if I did. Let's let's say I did give it five stars. If I was to then rank all the five star episodes of the X Files, mm -hmm. I don't think it would become uh, come close to getting to that number seven spot. So yeah, it's uh, it's interesting that the fans think of it so highly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's. You look, that's... You look... Yeah, you look very puzzled. Yeah, you think so me there. Like, I, I, like it's a fun episode. It's interesting. It's just I just wasn't expecting. I just yeah, it, it, it kind of makes you think you're missing something, doesn't it? But again, it's like it's that thing that it's that weird thing with averages. Like, mm -hmm. if you asked every X Files fan to rank their five star episodes, then if they, if they. Let's say all X Files fans gave this a five star, but if they were to rank all their five star episodes, they'd put this right down at the bottom of their five star episodes. That doesn't mm -hmm. stop IMDb from just going, nope, oh, they gave it five out of five, therefore, whoop. That's yeah, that's the funny thing with averages. So yeah, people giving it five stars and it is completely different to where they would rank it in their five star episodes. So yeah, but it is interesting. Should we get into it then? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's do this. Okay, so we start on Highway 375, Outpost 134, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> Mulder yeah. is excited. He and Scully are driving. Scully is being quite derisive of him because they're out there to meet a one of Mulder's contacts, and we all know how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Scully's basically just deriding him for the fact that he'll follow anyone into a wherever. Basically, if they told him little green men were there, but <laughs> yeah, they're meeting a source that works at Area Fifty One, and it's at this point that Scully's like, "Mulder, do you not just like crave a normal life? 
you know, family, kids, just, you know, just settling down and <laughs> doing normal stuff. Um, uh, to which you can probably guess Mulder's response to that one. But uh, they get pulled over. A bunch of men in black suits all get out of the car, come over, they're about to question them as to where they're going and that. And it's at that point that a flying saucer, or given this is X Files, we don't really yeah. do saucers all that often. It's it's a flying triangle, very reminiscent of you know all the way back to Deep Throat and many other episodes besides. But yeah, flying mm -hmm. triangle comes comes along. All these lights kind of go off, and and it like then it goes away, and it it looks like everyone's kind of forgotten about it a little bit. But anyway, yeah. they're just Mulder and Scully are moved on. It's like. Come on, Mulder, let's get in the car. <laughs> Mulder gets in the car. And then one of the agents, this, this guy called Morris, who is amongst the, the suit guys, he's looking on in complete bewilderment. And then we realize, oh, <laughs> that's Mulder. They've body yeah. swapped. <laughs> so this guy, this Morris, is, who's now in Mulder's body, has just quite happily gotten into the car with Scully and off mm -hmm. he goes <laughs> while Mulder's trapped in Morris's body with a bunch of guys yeah. that work for Area 51. So, yeah, opening credits ensue. Yeah, I, I mean, I like this opening credits because you get like a kind of preamble, a fun conversation, and then you always find that the, the government, everything seems to work out for them exactly as they kind of planned. And in this moment, the guy's like, there's nothing to see here, just go away, everything's fine giant spaceship and it's just one of those that like, ah it's like, a, a, it's like the, the paperwork i'm going to have to deal with it's just like a typical mm. job thing you know when something comes yeah. up and what i thought was the funniest about this was the reaction of both of them like Mulder <laughs> is flabbergasted they've swapped bodies and morris is almost just taking it any stride yeah like, right <laughs> let's go and the like, like just, he planned it like he planned it yeah it's yeah, oh. yeah, and it's just Mulder's just like, huh? What? what? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. the, the guy that's so eager to believe and, and yeah. engage with everything that's supernatural is flabbergasted, and yeah, Morris is just, well, let's get a show on the road. It does kind of put yeah. me into that position though of, uh, like, can you imagine how disorientating that would be? Like, if you're staring at these guys, there's a there's a flash or something and you, you kind of open your eyes and then suddenly you're staring at yourself and your partner. Yeah. But you're stood here. So <laughs> what the hell is happening right now? Like you'd think you were in a dream, like dreamland, and, you know, yeah. <laughs> one of the reasons this is called dreamland, uh, but it, that you literally would think you just, gone into a dream so you stand yeah. there just observing not saying anything even though you probably should and you're just there like watching your partner get into the car with you even though you're yeah. not over there <laughs> like, I, can, I can just yeah the way it's all played out like i, I could imagine someone saying why don't Mulder say something but i i can see exactly why he doesn't say something because it would be the most bewildering moment in your life yeah i'd expect him to be like like almost assessing the situation going fantastic i'm going to area 51 <laughs> <laughs> just get me there yeah. i got my free ticket this is my free <laughs> ticket yeah great stuff okay so we get past the opening credits and Mulder slash morris gets in the government car howard wants to know why he let Mulder and scully go um, and he's just like, uh, <laughs> he's not saying the right lot is Mulder at this point or, or Morris or whoever the hell he is. Yeah. He's just like, he, he's, he's literally just tagging along. Wait, I think waiting for himself to wake up. I think it, mm -hmm. he's like literally the next few scenes that we see him in, he just kind of blunders through them. Like he's waiting for someone to give him a poke. And he wakes yeah. up and it takes, takes him a while before he realizes that's not going to happen. And this is, mm -hmm. this is the reality, not the dream. They get to area 51, uh, to mm -hmm. which Morris is asked for his identification. And uh, again, like I say, Mulder goes 
like into proper like uh, <laughs> just has this yeah. dumbfounded look on his face like you'd expect him to kind of catch up a bit quicker it's like yeah clearly Mulder they're not asking you for identification they're asking mm -hmm. for the guy you swap bodies with for identification therefore yeah. start checking yourself because it's probably on your person um, <laughs> but he's just he's so spaced out at this point he just yeah Mulder then so he he uses the identification um, mm -hmm. to kind of basically find out where this dude yes. Morris yeah. kind of where is yeah. where his office is basically so he get, goes to his office and starts looking through photos and things and 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 just yeah just sits there in this office now what the hell do I do <laughs> yeah and, and I, I felt as if there was a missed opportunity I, I honestly thought they were going to do it like a quantum leap nod where he kind of looks in the mirror and just goes oh boy yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, come on. Oh, come on, just man. That, that, one. that would have been just, awesome. Yeah. Morris, who is now in Mulder's body, uh, so just, just from here on out, if I say Morris, then I'm referring to Morris, who is in Mulder's body. If I say Mulder, I'm referring to Mulder, who is in Morris, Morris's body. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> So Morris and Scully stop for gas. Scully's mm. phone rings, but Morris has the music up. Mulder is the one calling uh, and is interrupted and hangs up before Scully can get to the phone. Then Morris asks Scully to get him a pack of Morleys because seemingly all government agents who work for the dark side smoke Morleys. <laughs> but yeah, so instantly we're like okay and I, I know what this is now i know where we're at it's it's a body swap episode it's definitely a comedy comedy episode this is going to be one of them that's going to free up david Kovner to just wing it just go nuts yes. and just like muck about have fun um, you know, it, it, it was it was a well known fact that around this time, uh, David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson were starting to struggle with the you know the daily like you're talking like fourteen hour days, like six days a week, and like the same show for five years, um, mm -hmm. and the producers were really having to like we got to make this a bit more fun for these guys. We've got to give them stuff to do that perhaps they've not done yeah. so much before. So, yeah, I can imagine this being a very fun episode for David Coveney to to play, seeing him be all, like, nonchalant with Scully. Like, so, you know, look, I, I, I don't know too much about, obviously, behind the scenes at this point. So mm -hmm. was it just kind of, like, fractured? tensions between the two were they just getting fed up with each other yeah i mean i i can't remember where exactly it was but i know there was a pay dispute as well because david duchovny was getting paid more than gillian anderson um and gillian anderson quite rightly kicked up a bit of a, a fuss about that mm -hmm. um because david duchovny isn't the star of the x-files david duchovny and gillian anderson are the stars of the x-files like the way i see it yeah. and i'm pretty sure the way any x-files fan would see it one without the other just doesn't cut it the two of these yeah. actors are the stars of this show and it's equal billing as far as i'm concerned um so that must have been really hard for anderson to actually step up and do that but she kind of yeah. led the way for a lot of actresses in the business she was one of the first to kind of lead that charge and speak out and say you know what this enough's enough um i'm doing as much here i should get paid the same um absolutely so that's, that's strange to think that they were getting getting different pay mm. like it's just it's so odd because they are like as it's a dual show yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, the ju the the justification there is that obviously, so the X Files was the first thing that Gillian Anderson had done really so outside of a little movie where she had like the tiniest throwaway role, which they mm -hmm. 
used to market that movie once the X-Files took off, which was really annoying. Put her all over the cover and I bought it. <laughs> but that aside, yeah, the X-Files was like her first kind of on-screen work. Whereas before the X-Files, David Duchovny had, you know, he'd been, he'd done Twin Peaks. He'd done a, a whole series of movies. Uh, he, he'd done the Red Shoe Diaries. You know, he, he was a well-established actor at that point. Um things like Beethoven and stuff like that. So he was obviously the highest paid star once the show, when the show started, because in terms of name recognition, yeah, he would have been the star. But once you've been yeah. doing the show for five years, I feel like that disappears. And, oh, and yeah. Gillian Anderson would be just as recognizable as him as a result of the show. So somewhere along the line, like I understand it in the first season, David Duchovny getting paid more. That's just the nature of the business. If you're the star, you know, if, you, if you're the recognizable name, you get paid more. That's the way it works. Yeah. Um, so I have no problem with that. But by the time you get into like season three, you mm -hmm. know, like when it's like, no, th these guys are fully established now. Everyone knows the name. There's no excuse for it by that point. So, yeah. Um, so I can't remember what season it was when, when that all kicked off, but certainly there were tensions that, Mm -hmm. fans didn't quite know about um that came out in later years where they were doing all kind of things to to kind of keep Julian Anderson happy keep David Duchovny happy and you know just to try and smooth out the wrinkles and stuff but uh yeah yeah anyway uh, <laughs> that's like <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting though it's, it's interesting dude. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's always interesting to know this stuff because when you're watching stuff and 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 you just take it for granted that oh no that they're, they're happy playing these characters it's good to see mm -hmm. them on screen again but you never know the drama that's going on behind the scenes yeah um like i i never watched charmed um it's no. really not my kind of show but i read the book uh i can't remember what it's called by rose mcgowan it was her um autobiography and man like some of the stuff she talks about if if, if her side of the story is true then just the whole set of Charmed was just like the most toxic environment yeah. ever. Um, so, yeah, but fans of the show, they don't see this stuff. They just see the show and they get on with it. But So Fletcher's partner says that uh, they definitely have a leak due to the calls being traced out of the building mm -hmm. um, from Wegman's office, whoever Wegman is. Uh, Mulder takes a call from the wife. <laughs> so Fletcher's wife calls his office and it's like, mm -hmm. you need to get some milk or whatever it is. She's like, pick up some bread or some milk or something. Yeah, and, uh... I, I kind of like this whole aspect of the wife because, it, I mean, obviously it's set up with the initial conversation. Wouldn't you like to settle down and have a family and blah, blah, blah. And now he's going to experience aspects of that. <laughs> yeah. the episode which is just really funny you know yeah 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 it's it's a, yeah it's, it's not a throwaway line is it at the beginning it's no. literally like it's leading us into exactly what the episode is kind of going to be about really yeah Mulder gets dropped off home <laughs> yeah I. Fletcher's home <laughs> <laughs> it's really confusing, isn't it? <laughs> She's trying to keep yep. up with it. Yeah. So uh, the phone goes straight through to an operator. Yeah. He, so he, when he walks in, he picks up the phone, and it's like because yep. he, he's obviously a government operative, his own phone goes straight through to an operator, which means he can't make any like dodgy outside calls, which yep. just shows you how monitored these guys are. Um. <laughs> <laughs> So he, 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 he goes in, he sees that he's got a wife, like she's kind of sleeping, but it, so he goes downstairs and he uh he sits yep. on the couch. Yeah, that's flipping the channels. <laughs> Finds some soft core porn, and then that's it. That's him set for the night. <laughs> yeah. And it's like like this is like I've just every time this happens, it becomes more and more deliberate, doesn't it? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he just quite clearly loves porn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is like a mainstream character in a TV and, show, and they're just no illusions <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah. And again, it feeds into that whole single man lifestyle thing. It's it's a it's 
you know, we, we're talking about Mulder, do you want to settle down, get a wife, have kids and that? And it's like, well, he is, he's a single man and, and this is, I would say, more symptomatic of your single man than it is of your married man, or, or certainly one would hope at any rate. Yeah. Uh, that is, yeah, he's <laughs> sat there watching Paul. <laughs> but, uh, oh, man. We go to a crash site and mm. the guys that Fletcher works with are at this crash site kind of examining it and they find one of the pilots inside a rock he's kind of half in the rock half out the rock and it's 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 quite gnarly to be honest it like for me it freaks me out for someone who's like yeah i'm i'm claustrophobic and i'd i'd rather have a bullet in my head than just kind of wake up and find that half my body's inside a rock, my arms trapped in part of the rock and like half my face kind of in there. It just that to me freaks me the hell out. Oh, it's it's disturbing. Mm. And it's just it's it's like unexpected and just strange and weird. And you're just like, what the like but there's no way to get that guy out. Like is is he no. stuck in the rock? Is he part rock? Like, mm. like it's yeah. just it's you're like, it's he's bizarre. Just like yeah like yeah, like is his DNA has his DNA kind of melded with the rock, yeah. or is he just in it? Like, and all his bits are being crushed, and it's like, it, yeah. yeah, it's it's disgusting. So one of the pilots is found inside the rock, but the other is talking gibberish. So yes, it, like they, they find the, the other one, and he's just there. He talk, like, I don't speak Native American, but right off the bat, my my first instinct was, oh, they're that's speaking Native American there. That's that's some kind of Native American language, but yeah, yeah. It, to, to the rest of the soldiers, it just appears to be gibberish. Scully waits for Mulder outside Kirsch's office, and Morris arrives. He apologizes to Kirsch, promises to offer up the source if he has their name, or if he had their name, and he chats up the receptionist and then pats Scully on the ass. <laughs> And <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> calls a <Yeah>. little lady. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's I think it's like Scully's reaction here is key. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Like the sheer confusion and rage. It's the most condescending douchebag ever. <laughs> and yeah. Mulder can be pretty condescending at times. Uh, you know, at, yeah. at, at the best of times. So like this, this takes his condescension to whole new levels. Um, it does also raise the question: Is is Morris being as flirtatious as he is because he swapped bodies, or do you think he would be like this at the office? I think it's like a kind of unbridled id of the ramifications are not to him. Yeah. That's so you can be as head. obnoxious and as uh, uninhibited as as anything and, and it's not going to come back to you yeah so i think he's taking full advantage of just being a complete like, this, this, this is morris without bounds <laughs> you know yeah. without boundaries uh, yeah so that that question only arised in my brain because literally this morning about half an hour before we came on one of the channels i follow on youtube put a poll up and it said, if you could cheat on your partner and completely get away with it, would you do it? And, you know, it's like, yes or no. Obviously, I answered no. But having seen that question and then coming here and discussing this and then reading that, that question instantly comes to my brain, which is like, oh, Morris could get away with it because he's in someone else's body. So is that the determining factor here? Is he like, Oh man, I can do whatever I want now. Yeah. Cause... Yeah. But, and away. it's also that the, I mean he's he's been married for a number of years with the looks of it, like 20 years or something, and he's just like it's it's a whole new playground. Yeah. You know, and he's just he's just going crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Mulder has family time with the wife and kids, Chris and Terry, or Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this whole scene where he just gets the kids' names wrong and the daughter's like, 
It's like Which is great. the guy clear, clearly doesn't spend enough time with his kids anyway, and then Mulder just goes mm. and like completely cocks it up to make it even worse. So he upsets Chris about her nose. Um, so the wife, Joanne, uh, thinks he wants a divorce, then suggests he change his suit because he's wearing the suit that he had on the day before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he which, goes... Which is even funnier when he goes and looks at the suits, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes up to the wardrobe and it's literally like Johnny Cash, Man in Black, every single piece of clothing that he has is the same. He's just got literally like seven yeah. suits lined up, all the same, mm -hmm. one for each day. Um, Again, I would like to see Mulder uh, like, pick one up and then go, nah, put it back and choose a different one. <laughs> this is a bit mad. And it's at that point that we get perhaps one of the most iconic moments of the show, or cer certainly of season six, which is Mulder doing a little mirror dance. Or David Duchovny and um, what's his, what's his name? Michael McKean doing a mirror dance. So this, this wasn't yeah. done with... Um, camera trickery no no and it's, it's just it was, yeah. yeah two people doing it's it just that it's, yeah those two mirroring each other they had to rehearse the dance uh, there's a couple of little bits where you can tell like ah oh, they start to lose it a bit there but yeah. for the most part they do a pretty damn good job of like mirroring each other's movements and uh and, and i think there's a moment where i think michael almost cracks up yeah when they're doing it, <laughs> which to be honest, I think it just makes it better. Like it doesn't, you know, if it was perfect, oh, yeah. great, but that little bit of just rough a lot, mm. you know, just makes it more endearing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 good stuff. It's funny. It's really funny. It is. But then yeah. the, the the wife comes in, <laughs> Mulder's like Tai Chi. <laughs> just doing oh, just doing my Tai Chi. Yep, hold on. Oh, good. <laughs> and she, she says there's a phone call uh so he goes goes to the phone call and it's basically his his buddy saying get your ass down here right now he goes to the office where the pilot speaking in native american dialect is praying uh and the native american woman that they've picked up <laughs> is speaking like a military officer <laughs> so they've clearly swapped Which, bodies yeah it's hilarious, Brian. It yeah. really is. Just, and like, it's not even like, it's not funny, funny. It, it is funny, but it, it's just another person reading these lines. And yet, for some reason, mm. it's downright hilarious. It's because it's a Native American woman speaking like a US Army yeah. sergeant or whatever. It, it, it's just like, uh, like, wh why a woman? Why a Native American woman? It's like, why couldn't it have been like another, another dude? Well, then it wouldn't have made yeah. You have to have that stark contrast, don't you? So that you know. Yeah. Oh, it's stark, oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah that, that is definitely a dude, a military dude trapped inside the body. <laughs> I'm the dude disguised as a dude playing. <laughs> it's like just, yeah. just suddenly reminded of Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder. But uh, yeah, great stuff. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what that's in reference to, but I, I, I just I wrote down the quote where. It's it's Morris inside Mulder's body saying, "Be the whole, be the whole," and then I think he's Scully playing golf, going Mulder, yeah, playing golf or something. And he's like Mulder, and then he's like, "I got a birdie." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't picture the scene now. To be honest, now that I've slept. Oh, it's, it, yeah, yeah. He's just sitting in the yeah. computer. She's she's working, and he's just playing golf on the computer. Oh, just... yeah, that's a, yeah. He's dicking about in here. But, right, yeah. all right. <laughs> Uh, Mulder calls Scully to tell her what happened. She's sceptical and asks Morris to listen in. When she suggests meeting the man on the phone, Morris says, nah, <laughs> then calls her little lady. <laughs> yeah. And is it not like, uh, don't get your panties in a bunch as well? Is that yeah. not <laughs> yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, I mean, that alone should be enough to make Scully believe yeah, she. I mean, you phone. see all these looks and reactions. She's got to know something's going on with Mulder. But he's just, yeah. he's, well, he really yeah. is not himself. Yeah, like it's it's one thing for for him to pat her on the ass and all that kind of stuff and call her these funny names and and be be a, be a proper douchebag and just go, oh, Mulder's on an off day. But then when someone calls you up 
and says, Scully, it's me. I'm trapped in some another dude's body, and 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 he's able to get. You know, it's like surely the alarm bells have to be ringing there. It's like you would think. Come on, Scully, you can't be that skeptical. Mulder gives his change to the gas clerk and gets in the car. No, hang on. I love this. He's just like, keep the change in the guys. Like maybe I'll just shut up shop for a day. <laughs> <laughs> There's like five cents or something. It's yeah. so funny. <laughs> Thinking, I've done that myself. <laughs> and, and it's literally quoting this scene from the X-Files and I've done it on people hoping, hoping yeah. that they'll say, maybe I'll close up shop for the day. <laughs> and they never do. They always just look at me like I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah, so okay. So yeah, he gets in the car and once he leaves... The gas station implodes. So, yeah, mm. it starts shaking. The gas station clerk's like, what the heck? And then everything just goes, boom, blows up Yeah, everywhere. Great sequence. Totally. <clears throat> Mulder gets turned around by Fletcher's partners who are on their way to the gas station. Um, they go back to the gas station where the clerk has become one with the surroundings. And they shoot him, then burn the station. Again, that's, just that's the, yeah, this reminds me of something. See, this being like joined in with the floor or the block, it, mm. it, something nagging in the back of my head that reminds me of something, but I just can't put my finger on it. Yeah, I've, but, I've seen it in a movie somewhere and I can't think what it is, but I've definitely seen it. Like, and, and I'm this sure is going to sound stupid. It's not Wishmaster, is it? Oh, it might be, you know. I like, I yeah, remember someone. Like, Face. I remember someone's face stuck on some, or, or two people's faces stuck. I'm sure two yeah. people's faces kind of get molded into each other, and they're like, Ugh! and I just, yeah, it was just disgusting. Yeah. But it does remind me. It definitely reminds. It's, I've seen it in a film somewhere. Yeah. Definitely. But that's what it's like. Molders like we need to save this guy, and it, the, the guys just shoot him, which shows the, yeah. the the kind of where they are. But at the same time, I'm like, that's a mercy killing. <laughs> like, yeah, big time. Yeah, like yeah. if I was that guy, I would want you to put a bullet in my head. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be listening to the guy saying, we've got to save him. And I'd be like, dude, do I look like I can be saved? <laughs> so, put a bullet in my head right now and just let me go, yeah. please. It would have been good if he was in the floor and he just looked up at Mulder and said, I should have closed it early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have took that change and ran. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Scully goes to Mulder, Mulder's house to tell him that the call that was made to them was traced back to a gas station payphone. When she gets there, she finds Kirsch's secretary and Mulder is not interested. She goes off on him. So this is where she like seriously starts kind of shouting at him like, what, yeah. what is up with you? This is not you at all. It's like, you know, and, and telling Kirsch that you'd give the guy away. Like, like you know, it's like, so, but still she's not quite willing to go to bat and say, yeah, you, no. you're, you're not actually Mulder. So this is where um, Mulder calls her a name, doesn't he? He's not calling her. Name? Bitch. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Does he say that? He doesn't say that to her face, though, does he? I don't know. Don't like, she leave? Or yeah, maybe something. Yeah, but she's yeah. Like... yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we go back to the like the Area Fifty One people, and we learn that the gravity propulsion malfunction caused a rift in space and time meaning two things can occupy the same space at the same time. Uh, so a lot of a lot of kind of mumbo-jumbo there, but kind of gives you the gist as to what's going on. Uh, yeah. So M Mulder asks the appropriate question, which is, so how do we get the lizard out of the rock? Um, to which he's, the response is, who says we can? So from there, Scully finds the gas station uh, and it's, yeah, just burnt to the ground, basically. Yeah. Um, and she finds some coins as well, so two two coins that have been kind of just like blended together like a cross. Mm. And so, yeah. Like an X? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we we'll see what you're doing. <laughs> was that, yeah, I saw what you did there. I saw what you did. So Joanne confronts who she thinks is her husband, uh, Mulder, about their marriage. He tries to reassure her, and she assumes he needs Viagra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, great stuff. <clears throat> So it's it's funny that um, Morris is kind of screwing up Mulder's life by, you know, flirting with all screwing the women, up, screwing. <laughs> be, be, being nice with Kirsch and all yeah. that kind of stuff, and then, and then Mulder's screwing up Morris's life just by bumbling through it and and not not having the um, <laughs> the experience and the wherewithal to to operate within a marriage kind of relationship like you can't even fake yeah. it um <laughs> so it's, it's the door but uh, also she's she, she asks him like because he said scully in his sleep and she's like who's the scully it's like who and like he he, he he says, it's just some of work it's no one it's not even does that even sound like a woman's name to you it's like it's just <laughs> Some dude I work with. Anyway, the doorbell goes and it's Scully. It's like, hi, I'm Agent Scully. <laughs> it's, it's Morris Fletcher there. She's like, bah! <laughs> yeah. well, Mulder tries to convince Scully once again. She's like, your brother's name is Bill and he hates me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice to see that even Mulder's willing to call out the fact that her brother hates him. Oh yeah, because um, it's always it's always been this like just underlying tension, and it and it's this kind of is, is Mulder going to acknowledge the fact out loud that Scully's brother is a douchebag, and it's here yeah. that he he kind of does. It's like yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, your brother's name's Bill, and he hates me, um, mm -hmm. and it, and he gives he gives like the, the thing about the yogurt, and and then she still dismisses it, and it's like really. Even the yogurt thing. It's like, it's like you, you could anybody could find that stuff out online. It's like, you know, you could you, which, which which quite frankly, back in the nineties, no. I don't think you could. It's like I, I'm not sure you could get that level of detail online back in the nineties. Um maybe mm -hmm. going through your, your trash cans or something, but yeah, she's like she, she dismisses it because like anybody could find that out. It's like even that yogurt thing. So which I just found hilarious. Um, Scully refuses to believe, but Mulder says he'll prove it. Meanwhile, Fletcher watches on, and there's some really nice camera trickery. So there's this, um, they do this, like, focus pulling, where they go from yeah. Morris, or, like, David Duchovny at the door playing Morris, and then they kind of do this focus pull to the the wing mirror, on the car, which is also David Duchovny, but then you flip into the car itself, and it's actually Morris. Yeah. And, like I, I can't remember how it's done. I can't remember the order in which it all appears, but just that whole sequence of showing us Mulder, but it's Morris, and then Morris, mm -hmm. but it's Mulder, all within like just that shot. It's, it's just yeah, really well done, really well played. Great camera work. So Fletcher calls his partners and grasses himself up as the source. To which we're like, yeah. hmm, what's he playing? Yeah, so you're like, it, it's, it's Morris just like, I'm liking where I am just now. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. that old life can just go away. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yes, pretty much. So Mulder steals a flat, the flight recorder from the, uh, the downed thingamajig and Fletcher's partner watches obviously now knowing having been told by Fletcher that Fletcher is the inside man um, yeah. Kirsch calls Scully and chews her out for being back in Nevada and he's like you will follow my instructions to the letter Agent Scully and you're just like oh no what's What's happening? What's, what's going to happen? And as soon as Mulder walks into that service station, you know exactly what's going to happen because this is right near the end of the episode. We've got to go out on a cliffhanger, and we know that Mulder, uh, we know that Scully's been called into Kirsch's office. So it's all a bit like, oh, 
yeah, you, you, you know exactly where it's heading, which is well, so no, it's, no, no, you don't, Brian, because if you're me, <laughs> uh, you didn't realize it was a two parter, um, and had no oh, idea that it was, all right. no idea it was this close to the end of the episode, and just assumed that it was going to be like a, a bust, they were all going right. to be back together, and then there'd be like the rippling time, and Mulder oh, would be back in his body, and the guy would be going to jail. So, in my head. <laughs> This was See, ramping up to a really quick finish. Which makes me feel like you don't pay any attention to anything <laughs> I say at the end of it. Because <laughs> at the end of Triangle, when you asked me about Dreamland, I specifically mm. told you that it was a two-part comedy episode. And then when you actually got to watch it, you're like, nope, I've slept since then. Yep. <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think okay. we've, we've, I mean, we understand that I don't even recognize reoccurring characters. I'm lucky <laughs> I know who Scully and Mulder are at this point. <laughs> so it took, it took you a while. It took you yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scully's the, Scully's the male and Mulder's the female. You know that, right? <laughs> well, I mean, in their actions, I suppose. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, definitely. So we go to the service station where there is a, a meetup that, that, Morris has kind of orchestrated. Uh, yeah. So Mulder goes there as Morris to take the flight recorder, but it's all a trap, which Scully is kind of forced to be in on. And when Mulder gets there, basically all hell breaks loose. SWAT team breaks in, gets his ass on the floor and arrests him. And you're kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's it. That's That's the end of part one. So... Final thoughts. Yeah, yeah like I, I like this episode. It was really funny. Uh, I I love the kind of interactions. I love the kind of similarities between Morris and Mulder. Like the fact that they both like to fall asleep mm. watching porn, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I just thought was fun. I loved the kind of freaky nature of everybody being sucked into things. I mean, it really was nightmare fuel a lot of the yeah. time. Um, uh, I just wish that Scully was a little bit quicker on the uptake of what mm. was going on. Um, and I feel like this this X-Files season six has got off to a far wackier uh, <laughs> idea than any other one. It really has. You know, with, with Triangle, yeah. with Dreamland, I would say mm. even the kind of first episode was an unusual start to the series. It just... Feels... Well, it, well, even Drive, even Drive, yeah, because it's it, it wasn't like your conventional X Files. You had Mulder trapped no. in a car with a guy, with Brian Cranston yeah. for the whole episode, like kind of yeah. building that relationship up with them. And yeah, it was. The, the, no, there's it's more not the same series. No, it's it's the, there's a lot more amusement here, and and I I think back in the day when this first came out, that was. While while these episodes um, in isolation are actually pretty damn good episodes, the fact that we're getting humorous episodes back to back, mm. it was a concern. I was worried. Um, I felt like they just fully embraced like the comedy aspect of it. You know, the Darren Morgan side of stuff. Like, I love yeah. the Darren Morgan stuff, but mm. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it works. Mm. Because it's peppered, but but yeah. if the show just became that, then I would I would be like, no, this isn't the show that I actually yeah. signed up for, um, yeah. and that. So, like I'll say this right, this episode for me is another five out of five. Okay, yeah. that's that's my grade. I'm giving it a five out of five. Mm -hmm. That's three five out of five episodes back to back. So. In, in in that respect, I can't grumble. However, I do think they should they could have been better spaced. I think yeah. we've I, I think that the, the the season is front loaded with these mm -hmm. humorous episodes. Um and I think they should have been with a with a little rearranging, even if it was like one serious, one funny, one serious, yeah. one funny. But it's like yeah, three episodes. Well, four really, because it's a two-parter. So next week's episode is also going to be another amusing one. So mm -hmm. it, it's very front-loaded for 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 the, for the start of a season to 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 be like this. So um, mm -hmm. I I don't like it in that regard. But 
in isolation, I can't argue that this episode isn't a five out of five because I was highly entertained yeah. by it. So, yeah, yeah, and I, I think the, the the bigger problem for me, and it's not like that, it's not like a major issue because I've been enjoying the series so far. Is people coming from the movie, which was so serious and kind of really dug into what modern Scully was, coming into this mm. where they've yeah. had. I'd specifically Triangle and then Dreamland, where it's two quite fantastical episodes. It's mm. probably giving people a wrong opinion of what the series is as a yes. whole. Yeah, yeah, it, so it, 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 be yeah, but because because like a lot of people came to the show because of the movie. They saw the movie and they're like, yeah. oh, I'm just, I'm not going to go back and start from from scratch. I'll, I'll just go, I'll go straight into season six. And like, yeah, I think you're right. I think a lot of people coming into season six, like for me, uh, like the humorous stuff, like an episode yeah. like Dreamland, mm -hmm. I don't think works as well if you don't know who Mulder and Scully are. Yeah. Like it's, it's only because we know Mulder and Scully so well that the, a lot of the humorous stuff antics that come out of the body swap stuff mm. works in the way that it does um so yeah it, it to, to 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 kick it off so early like i'm not saying it shouldn't be in season six i just think the 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 the, the position the episode positions that they've put them in do, i think does a disservice to the characters of Mulder and scully and to, and to the vibe of the show and to to what it to what the show really is all about um yeah. like i say still five star episodes just in the wrong places yeah I, I, especially something like triangle which is connected to nothing whatsoever mm. would have been a great mid-season episode when there's yeah. like a little bit of a lull and it just this is just a freshener but yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean we're, we're, we're arguing about nothing to be honest yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah dreamland is it dreamland 2 is the next episode isn't it yeah, so, yeah, yeah. What can we expect from that? More of the same, you know. Yeah. It's, it's 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 the second part of this episode. So that the obviously they, they didn't end this episode with them going back into each other's bodies. I think mm. you can guess the outcome. Yeah. <laughs> Given that yeah. we have yeah. several more yeah. seasons of the show, so I don't think it'd be much of a spoiler to say what happens there. But it's it's all about how does it happen? How do we yeah. get there? Um, and what? antics are going to ensue on the way mm. to getting there you know and it, it's just yeah the, really it's it's it, the question is do is the second part going to be as entertaining as the first part um mm. so and and my memory is that it is but my memory Good. can be pretty crap at times so we'll see yeah Okay, for everybody out there, thank you for watching or listening to us uh, on podcasts or on YouTube. We appreciate both. If you've got a comment to drop, then uh, put it in the comment box. We'll reply back to you, maybe even read it out on one of our shows at some point. Don't forget to rate us because it really helps other people discover the channel and the podcast. And we'll see you next week for Dreamland Part 2. <laughs>